Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we will show you how the Elva Nanoface is installed and how it is used. Part 1 Getting Started This part will show you how to connect the Nanoface to your computer and the installation of the drivers. Step 1 Connect the breakout cable to the Nanoface. The breakout cable provides most of the connectors all four analog inputs and the analog output 1 and 2. The cable provides also the MIDI input and both MIDI output. All other connections, the digital I.O., the headphones output and the instrument input can be found on the nanoface itself. Mount the breakout cable to the 15-pin port connector on the rear of the nanoface. Tighten the screws carefully. If you want to listen to music from the nanoface after the installation process, keep a double RCA cable ready for the connection of the breakout cable to your speakers. Step 2. Connect the USB cable to the host computer. It's possible to connect the nanoface to every Windows or Mac computer with a standard USB 2.0 port. Connect the USB cable to the USB port on the rear of the nanoface. Also remember, you don't need the included cable. All third-party USB 2.0 cables will work with the nanoface. The included USB cable provides two connectors. Connect the main connector to a free USB 2.0 port. On every computer system we've tested, the nanoface is sufficiently powered by the main connector of the included USB cable, so you don't need the second connector. Step 3. Driver installation. Start the installation with a double-click on the setup file. The video shows the installation procedure on macOS. For the similar installation on a Windows computer, please refer to the manual. After the successful installation, a restart of the system is necessary. After the connection to the host computer and the driver installation, the nanoface comes to life. The red digital output on the rear and the green output LED start to shine. If the driver is not installed correctly, the lights of the nanoface will not shine and it will not react, even when you press or turn the encoder button. Part 2. How to use the nanoface. The nanoface provides a unique usability concept. Analog gains for the four inputs and all output levels and special features like phantom power and hardware monitoring will be controlled with a big silver rotary encoder directly on the nanoface. All mixing, channel routing and digital levels will be controlled by the audio software on your computer. This could be any program like Cubase, Logic, Sonar, Samplitude or iTunes and the Windows Media Player. In the next minutes we will show you how to control the features of the nanoface with the encoder. Press the encoder one time to switch between the four input and output modes. The LEDs show the deselected mode. In every mode the encoder controls the volume or gain of the selected input or output. After the connection to the host, the out LED shines. The encoder controls the volume of output 1 and 2. Turn the encoder to the right to increase the volume. Turn the encoder to the left to decrease the volume. Press the encoder one time to switch to the next mode. Output 1 and 2 is followed by the headphones output and both input pairs. 
after input 3, 4, the nano phase switches back to output 1, 2 and the cycle starts again. Duplicate the signal from output 1, 2 to the phone's output. This is an important feature. In the default mode, the phone's output is assigned to output 3, 4 of the nano phase. This is shown by LED 3, 4. But every Windows or Mac program plays on output 1 and 2. This means you cannot listen to the signal on your headphones. But there is an easy solution. Just duplicate the signal from output 1, 2 to the headphones output. First, switch to headphones output mode. Press the encoder until the headphones LED and the 3-4 LED shine. Press and hold the encoder. Turn it to the left. LED 3-4 turns off. The phone's output on the right side of the nano phase plays the signal of output 1 and 2. The encoder does now control the volume of signal 1-2 separately from the chosen volume of output 1-2 on the breakout cable, your speakers. Switch the headphones back to output 3-4. Press and hold the encoder. Turn it to the right. Hardware monitoring. Press the encoder until only the out LED shines. Turn the hardware monitoring on by a simple double-click on the encoder. The in LED starts blinking. The signal of the analog inputs 1-2 is directly routed in hardware to the analog output 1-2. To turn hardware monitoring off, choose output 1-2 and double-click the encoder. Switch input 2 to the high z instrument input, the guitar input. First, switch to input 1-2 mode. Press the encoder until the input LED in shines. If LED 3-4 also shines, press the encoder until only the in LED is on. Double click the encoder. Now the guitar LED shines. The analog input 2 gets its signal now from the high C instrument input on the right side. The input on the breakout cable will not pick up any signal until the high Z input is switched off. Now switch back to the XLR line input on the breakout cable. To achieve this double click the encoder. The guitar LED turns off. How to set the preamp gain for the inputs 1 or 2. Switch to input 1, 2 mode. Press the encoder until the LED in shines. If LED 3, 4 also shines, press the encoder until only the in LED is on. Press and hold the encoder. Turn it to the left for channel 1 or turn it to the right for channel 2. After you click and turn, the LED on the left or right channel blinks to indicate which channel is selected. Turn the encoder gradually to the right to raise the preamp gain for the selected input. To switch back to input 1 and 2, press and hold the encoder. Turn it one click to the right. The encoder now controls the gain of both preamps, input 1 and 2, together. To select input 2, press and hold the encoder. Turn it one step to the right. How to turn phantom power on and off. In order to turn the 48 volt phantom power for microphones on or off, switch to input 1 2 mode. Press and hold the encoder. Turn it to the left for channel 1 or turn it to the right for channel 2. Press and hold the encoder for 3 seconds. Depending on which channel you are activating, a red LED in the left or right meter will turn on. To turn phantom power off, repeat the same procedure. Select channel 1 or 2 and press the encoder for 3 seconds.